Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at four different methods to rotate actors and meshes and benchmark their performances. We will be looking at these four actors right here. We will have the rotating component, the tick event, the timer event, and a material shader to simulate rotation. We will be looking at what is their benefit, what is their drawbacks and finally we can do a little contest here which one do you think will be the most performant and which one do you think will be the least performant let's take a look at each setup for each one the first one is with the rotating movement obviously this will have to be in an actor and all you have to do really is add component rotating movement and you're done by itself the rotating movement will have its own default properties I highly recommend you take the update only if rendered, if required, especially for aesthetic purposes. You don't want something to continuously update in the background if it's not even showing, and you don't need to. That concludes the first one. For the second one, we're going to look at event tick. There are many ways to use the tick event. Uh, one of them is to add rotation or add to local rotation or to set the rotation based on the previous rotation in any way you want. In this case, we will simply add to the rotation. Another way to do it is to use the timer functions. So on begin play, we're going to set a timer function by name and the timer function will be to add to the world rotation. In this video, we have tested both times at 0.1 second and 0.05 seconds. And the final way to do it is by using a material shader. As we can see right here, the preview object is actually moving. We have the regular material with the texture and the metallic specular and roughness settings, but also in the world position offset, we have added something called rotate about axis. What the world position offset does is that it manipulates the vertices of your meshes and basically forces the GPU to do something with them. In this case, we rotate them. The rotate about axis requires four parameters. The first one is the actual axis. We put a value of one for blue. Reminder, red is X, green is Y, and Z is blue. So therefore we need blue to be at least one. The rotation angle can be set through some sort of mathematical formula if you wish. You can use a sine cosine function if you wanted to go back and forth. Since we want a continuous following rotation, time was used. If you want to make it go faster, you can multiply the time value. If you want to make it go slower, you can divide the time value. Next, the pivot point. Each object will have its own pivot point. The pivot point can be offset by using an add function and simply adding a parameter or a vector. In our case, the coin's pivot points are the center, so we don't really need to change it. And finally, the position. How do you want to rotate it? We want to rotate it using the world position. And that's it. The tests we will be doing will be using these parameters here. The bigger the numbers, the worse the performance, except for FPS. So first off, we're going to look at the rotation component. As we can see, we have over 300 actors in here. To do the test, we're going to play in standalone mode, and we're going to basically check how our performance ranks. So as we can see, we have 300 coins floating about being rendered and rotating using the rotating component. By pressing the tilde key on your keyboard, you can summon the command line and you can write stat FPS and you can get the frames per second. As we can see, there's a huge toll on them. Next up, tilde stat unit will give us the rest of the information. So as we can see, the performance is quite poor with 300 rotating objects. One of the main reasons for that is because of the draw calls. We can see that the GPU is overloaded. If we do tilde stat scene rendering, we can see effectively how many draw calls are being called. In this test here, we have about 273. Notice that the frames per second did drop due to the fact that we're also using this uh, interface here. While doing the tests, when we were comparing tick and timers, there were no differences in terms of frames. However, if we did reduce the timer interval to 0.1 instead of 0.05 seconds, we got a better uh, game millisecond count. 
The most interesting part came when we used the tick one. Something a bit unexpected when using tick was the fact that if you had less actors on screen, it would spin faster, as you can see. If we check the stats for FPS, we can notice the following. When I'm not looking at my actors, or they're not rendered, I have about 100 FPS and 9 milliseconds between frames. When I start loading them, my frame rate starts to drop, and we start seeing them spinning. But the more that I'm spinning, the less frames I'm getting per seconds. Now remember what tick does. Tick ticks every frame. But the less frames you have, the less it ticks. So now we have this weird relationship where if I have too many of them, tick is just not going to do its job. So buyer beware for those using tick. This is one of the issues. When comparing timers, however, something else was noticed. Having more or less of them on the screen did not affect their spin at all. That is because timers are not dependent on the frame rate, which was very interesting. However, the performance was just as poor as with tick. The final test that we concluded was the one with the rotation in the material. When loading this, you will notice two things. First of all, the shadows are static. There's nothing we can do about it. I have modified a singular coin to have a mobile type of lighting. And as you can see, the shadows do move, however, incorrectly. That's because it is using the static shadow as ways to measure. So one of the drawbacks of using this method is that shadows are not always correct. You will have to unfortunately either remove the shadow or if not necessary, leave it as is. Additionally, the coins are only bound by what their original static mesh were. This is nothing more than an illusion. Now let's take a look at the performance. As we can see here, the performance is absolutely exceptional. If we look away, we have about 200 frames per second. And if we start looking into it, our frames barely drop to 170. Now let's take a look at what will happen at the draw calls. If we do a tilde stat scene rendering, we can see that the draw calls have dropped to 15 instead of the 270 to 300 plus. The reason for that is because these are only static meshes. They are instanced. Therefore, they do not draw too much attention from the CPU. So to make matters more complete, we decided to test the rotating material in an actor with absolutely nothing else. In this scenario, we have our static mesh with the rotating material. There is nothing else. When we test this, we can kind of see a little bit of lag. So let's try to see mathematically what we have. And when we compare it again, we get the same values as before. The GPU and the draw call are being bottlenecked. The game, however, is running very smoothly. So the blueprints themselves are not taking a lot of CPU. However, the GPU itself is bottlenecked because it has to draw every single of those actors. If we check with the scene rendering, we can see that the draw call has spiked as it did in the previous uh, tests. So let's see what the actual results were. As we can see here, if we compare the normal values based on multiple tests, not just the one I'm streaming right now, we can see that the frames per seconds baseline were about 120. The game milliseconds was about eight, the draw was seven, the GPU was seven, and the draw calls themselves are 11. This is what you would expect normally if I'm not looking at anything and there's no coins. Using the rotating component, the frame rate dropped to 26. The game doubled and the draw went up about six to five times. And that's because we've basically blasted the draw calls. Tick performed much less well than the rotating component. And we saw that little bug where if you have too many on screen, they will start spinning faster than if you have not enough. So very important to note. Otherwise, everything else is comparable. The timer we tested at 0.05 and 0.1 intervals. And we wanted to see how did it impact the performance. Apart from the game 
milliseconds that were reduced by about three. It did not impact anything else at all. When using the material, because the meshes were instant, the frames were preserved and the draw calls barely exceeded what we had before. And finally, when we tried the material in the actor, the performance again was low. We can kind of see here that the rotating component was doing far better in an actor type, followed by the material, and then followed by the tick and timers, whom together really didn't do a good job at all. But our winner has to be the material. There was the caveat with the shadows. So it would seem in conclusion that depending on what you want to do, one method is definitely much better than the other. The first thing you will notice is that if you have an actor that requires rotating constantly, the rotation component is your best bet. Tick, timer, and materials in actors simply don't do the same amount of jobs. The material, however, on a static object does a much greater job. This is particularly amazing for foliages, random asteroid belts, pollen, or even far side planets that you don't really see up close. So if you ever need a lot of things to rotate and spin in the background, using the material would be your best bet. If you have an actor, none of these techniques other than the rotating component will save frames. Remember, you want to save the frames and kill the animals. And that concludes our test. So did you guess right? Did you think that the rotating component would be the best for an actor? Did you guess that the material will outperform any of them on a static object? Thank you for watching. What method would you use? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more of these, drop us a like and be sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to support the channel, check out our Patreon, where we will be releasing early access builds for games that we are making uh, and voting on future video topics. We can also hang out on Discord. See you in the next one.